All right, come on, Turning Point, you know how to do it. Come on, let's stand up and praise the Lord. Give him praise, give him glory. Come on, you're all loud people, you're loud people. Come on. I can't hear you guys over here, you guys are loud, amen. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to Arise Men's uh, Conference of, what are we in, August, August of 2024. Welcome, everyone. We have a, a good lineup here. Uh, tonight will be Pastor Eric will be speaking tonight. Come on. Tomorrow morning we'll have Pastor Tommy Notice speaking, right? Enojos. Enojos. No hoes. I'll we'll be speaking to tomorrow morning. So uh, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. I'm excited. I'm really excited. I am. I'm excited. Almost nervous in my own house. Imagine that, man. <laughs> but it's good to be here. It's good to be here. Good to have you guys here. You know, uh, uh, we're just gonna open up in prayer, and then we're gonna worship God, honor God. I, I just pray that every one of you came hungry. Every one of you. An open heart to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen. That He's here to heal. He's here to deliver. He your life. If you just want to be enriched by God, He's willing to do this for you. He's willing to have you let everything go. Just let it all go. Everything that you went through all week long, all the trouble, all the circumstances, situations in your life, just let that go. Any sin, just repent of it. Repent of it. God will forgive you. So uh, as we as we enter in right here with prayer, we're just going to bless the Lord and thank the Lord for what he's doing, what he's about to do in our lives right here today. Amen. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you for our lives and our salvation, Lord. We thank you for your word that lives in our heart, Lord. We thank you for the seed of life, Lord, that produces the fruit, Lord, the patience, the kindness, the perseverance, Lord, the gentleness, the meekness of your spirit within our hearts and within our lives, Lord. I thank you, Father, as we hear the word, Father, it renews our mind and transforms our lives into the image of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, right now as we worship and we praise you, Father, that it will be a, a sweet smell unto you, Lord God. A worship, Father, and a, and a praise that would just bless your heart, Father, as we bless you, Lord God. We just, we thank you and we honor you for who you are, Lord. I thank you for every adult that's here, for every children, every child that is here, Lord God. I just thank you for their lives. We thank you for the blessings. The blessings, Father, that will come, Lord. And the blessings that are already here upon us, Lord God. I thank you. I'm excited, Father, for what you're doing, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for using Turning Point Fellowship. Thank you for Arise Men, Father, right now, of God, Lord God. I thank you for Pastor Eric and his lovely wife, Celia, Lord. I thank you for their work that they're, they're doing right here in your kingdom, Lord. I thank you for the pastors that are here, their wives that are here, Lord God. I thank you for their lives and their salvation, Lord. So I just ask that Father, those that are on their way, Lord God, that you would bless them. Their comings and their goings, no accidents, no breakdowns, no flat tires, Father, not even a ticket. Just a safe passage to and from this place. Angels encamped about us, Lord, protecting us and watching over us, Lord. We're grateful, people. We're thankful, Lord, for what you've done, Lord. We bless you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to pass it on to Pastor Eric. I'm going to pass it on. All right. We're going to worship the Lord and we're going to welcome our worship team here. Amen. Arise, men. Hallelujah. Let's get ready to praise. Be excited for the Lord. Begin lifting up his name. Holy, holy.
serve a mighty God. Mighty is His name. Mighty is His name. Let us exalt the name of Jesus. Jesus, be lifted high. Oh 
lift your hands, family. You are holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Let all his people say you are holy, holy. Say that name, Yeshua. 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 That name, Yeshua. Yeshua, say that holy name, say that holy name, Yeshua. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the kingdom. Is the power. Yours is the glory forever. Yours is the kingdom. Yours.
So will I, Father. We will worship you. We will worship you. 
spirit and truth. Bless his holy name, bless his holy name. Thank you, Jesus.
Holy, holy. Holy, just young people, everyone, just close your eyes. Just close your eyes.
Actually, this is for uh, Grace Awakening. Last night, I, I've been, I wake up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, I was like, oh, and sometimes I'm so wide awake. And I don't turn on TV, but I just study or put some worship music on. And this last week, I've been waking up at 3 o'clock. I feel like calling Pastor Angel. What's up, brother? <laughs> But, you know, he won't answer the phone for me. <laughs> but this is a prophetic word, and, and, it, and the Lord gave me the word around 3 o'clock. Pastor Tommy and Monica and Billy and uh, Dina. It's for Grace Awakening. And it's about the latter rains. And, as, and I, I wanted to, like, get prophetic, but I wanted to study and understand. I know what the, the latter rains are, but I, as I research it, I think this will illuminate even more for Grace Awakening. And Deuteronomy 11, 14, it says that I will give you the rain of your land in due season. The first rain and the latter rain, that thou may gather the corn and the wine and the uh, oil. Well, first of all, we have to understand that the land of Israel only, only had rains twice a year. That was it the former and the latter rain. And the only way crops were watered was by rain. They didn't have an irrigating system or anything like that to bring water in. Don't forget, this is at 3 o'clock in the morning. Forgive me. So, <laughs> you know. The early rain was necessary after a hot, proactive summer to prepare the soil for receiving the seed. Let me stop there. You have sown seed. The former rain has, has, as you talked, and as the ministry has gone forward, the, the, the former rain has, has come and, and has just saturated the ground so that the seeds can go in. Because you know you can't plant seed on hard ground. It has to be toiled, right? And the latter rain, which was shortly preceded the harvest. In other words, the latter rain, just before the harvest came, would come. The first to prepare the earth for seed 
And then tell on him, the second was a prayer for a full year of harvest that fell in the spring. So a farmer waited for the rain with great farmer, excuse me, so farmers waited for the rain with great anticipation. And God wants you to know to wait for anticipate with anticipation that the latter rains are coming. Yeah. And it, it, all of you could take this really. And when we and when we anticipate and wait for God with a kind of earnest expectations, he answers, he will come with us. Joel 2.23 says, So be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain and, of course, comes down, and the rain, and the former rain and the latter rain will come first of the month. In other words, the rains is coming, the latter rains are coming. And as you've been waiting and, and this church has been waiting, I'll tell you something. It's not easy to plant. It's not easy to plant on hard ground because it's, the seeds go up. But I believe if, you know, I'm saying, okay, Lord, if you're going to wake me up at 3 o'clock, just don't give it to me, right? So, so I believe for grace awakening that the latter rains are coming. In fact, Pastor Tommy, you're a cool brother, you know, you're a cool pastor. But <laughs> it may be 3 o'clock in the morning, but, but here's what I felt, that you need to start dancing. I was thinking about, and Pastor Angel probably did the same thing. Remember when we were kids, we would get in the puddle. It was raining, and the end of our mother said, don't get in the rain. Don't wet yourself, right? But we did it anyway. And, and, it, and it's, I believe that God is telling you, will you rain? Will you rain? Will you, will you rain? No. Will you dance? Will you dance in the rain? Because the latter, latter rains is coming to Grace Awakening. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. And one other thing, as I was studying last night, preparing, is that he brought me to Elijah when he looked at the, he called the drought, and then he said what? The Bible says he heard the sound of abundance of rain, but the servant didn't hear. The servant didn't even see until the seventh time. And what the Lord spoke to me is there are some that don't hear the rain. They don't hear the latter rain, but, but they're looking, they're looking. And even those that maybe see only rain as a, a cloud as a fist, encourage them because they will be part of that latter rain that's going to come. Amen? Okay. That was just a, a pre- Well, first of all, I want to thank Pastor Angel for opening up your church. Good to see all. Good to see all of you people. I, I have missed you so much, and it's good to see some friends. And and if I look at you, like I forgot your name, <laughs> but I remember Pastor Angel. <laughs> right now, we're going to receive an offering for a rise man of God. Is that okay? In Matthew 26, 7, it says, While Jesus was eating, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume, which she poured on his head. The disciples saw this and became angry. Why all this waste, they asked. Verse 9, the perfume could have been sold for a large amount of money and given to the poor. Stop right there. Your alabaster box that you have this morning is your wallet. It's your purse that has your wallet in there, sisters. And and that's your alabaster box. And when the disciple, when the Pharisee said it's going to waste, let me just tell you a little bit about a rise man of God and what's been happening there. Is that a rise man of God? We've seen miracles. We've seen lives change. Uh, a few years ago, we were at uh, AJ's church. Uh, not this there, but before, and and one of the speakers came up to me with a with a bag of drugs. <laughs> yeah, a bag of drugs, and he said that one of the brothers came over and said, "I cannot, I don't want to use this anymore. I want to give it up." And so he gave it to me. And, 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 I, and so I said, I put it in the car, and I go, "Could you imagine if they stopped us?" 
Oh, a pastor with a big bag of drugs and a rise man of God ministry. Oh, we've got a newscast right there. But we, we got rid of it. And then, and then the, the one I really, there's, there's several, so many, but this one I really like. And I'm just sharing this with you that when you bring your finances in, it's going on good ground. It's going on a good ministry. And what happened is that there was a young lady that I, I did financial aid. She was a pastor's niece, and she came from uh, Las Vegas because she was having problems in Las Vegas. And so when she was in Las Vegas, they sent her over to her uncle, who's in Fresno, to watch over and take care of her. Well, she came up, and all those that know Evangelist West prayed for her. And she went down. And when she went down, her shoes at the same time came off. And the Lord spoke to me, and, and I told her the word is that the Lord says you've got a new walk now. That all the old stuff is gone, and God give you a new walk. And she was so excited that I talked to the pastor like a month later, and she says that the young lady, she's probably 9, 20 or something like that, she said the young lady even tried to do it on her own, get the shoes off, and she couldn't do it. So she knew this was God and no one else. So, uh, yeah, let's give the Lord a hand. So the word of God says signs and wonders will follow them. Amen. And uh, rise men of God, we have signs and wonders that are following us. And so I want to encourage you as you give, give with a cheerful heart, knowing that we're going to be in Visalia at the end of the month. And then we're going from Visalia to Fresno, Sanger. And then from Sanger, we're going to Arizona. And that'll be it for the year. So we're traveling. And so all the finances could help. Um, you know, we've got a team back here that is so gracious and, and loves worshiping the Lord. So why don't you go ahead and come up if you're ready and just bring your... your oh, if you need an envelope, there's one. Thank you, Brian. Need an envelope? And then if you have cell, you can right there. And then just come on up.
alive in you, Jesus. We come alive in you, Jesus. Hey, we come alive. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. We come alive. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive in you, Jesus. We come alive. We come alive. Stretch your hands forth. Father God, we just speak blessing over this offering. I can see the bucket overflowing right now, Father God, as we begin to sow the seed into this fantastic ministry of Arise Men of God. Father God, we ask that the seed that is planted go forth before us, Father God, to plant seeds in other places, Father God, to change and to transform the lives of men all over the nation. In Jesus' precious name we pray tonight. Amen and amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, surprise, <laughs> my pastor had no idea. He saw me coming up and he was like, oh God, there he goes again. My name's Billy Joe Wade. Oh, yeah, you guys can be seated, sorry. <laughs> you please don't stand up for me. That's for Jesus. My name's Billy Joe Wade. I am a member of Grace Awakening Ministries. My beautiful wife and I, Dina, are the spiritual sons and daughters of Pastor Tommy and Monica Enojos right here. So Eric asked me just to come up and kind of just testify for a few minutes, you know, about how we met and then about some things that are going on in, in, in my life right now. So I think it was in, was it pre-COVID? I mean, this COVID just jacked some things up, didn't it? It really did. But I think we met, it was at a men's ministry meeting it was, in, it was in Ontario, right? And we're just having some lunch. Uh, Pastor Tommy and I and another uh, gentleman were doing worship there that day. And it was just such a great day of ministry. We're sitting outside having some lunch. And I sit across from this handsome fella right here. And we just begin to strike up a conversation. He begins to tell me about Arise Men of God and what he's been doing. And how he had just launched this just a couple years previous. So, and I'm like... I'm coming off of a word that God had given me about connections. He was showing me vision after vision about making connections, making the right connections, and how these connections that we make will impact not just your, your, your sphere, your town, your state, or the, or, the, or the nation, but it can change people across the world. The connections that you make, maybe at night, You'll make a connection that could change somebody who could change the world. I mean, do you guys really, do you understand that, that the connections are so important? So during a, a, a time and a season when God was talking to me about connections, I made a connection. And from that connection, we said there was no doubt that we were going to bring a rise men of God to Hesperia, which we've done. Have we done four already? Or are we on three? Three coming up on four. We'll probably kick... Floor's coming up. Uh, we'll probably kick off 2025 in Asperia, and you're all invited, okay? So come on up to Asperia. So my life has been changed. This connection, because I met people like Angel, because I met people like Alfred, and all the, the Arise uh, worship team, they are just fantastic. They know how to worship. L, where's L at? Where's that crazy man? I see you back there. You fit right in with us, bro. I love it. The first time they came up, L led worship, and we were just like, what? Where is this guy? Where did he come from? We're like, we got to get to know you, bro. So we got to get you back to Asperia. There's no doubt. So, Pastor, thank you for letting me share. Thank you for being a part of my life. A rise of men of God has sent me 
pretty much chasing these guys all over California, into Nevada, into, into Arizona, and we're going back to Arizona in a couple of months. I was blessed and honored enough to be a speaker in, in uh, Las Vegas, which was, which was awesome. And I'm just humbled and honored just to be here and just to be a part of your family. Thank you. Thank you. One more thing. I know. Don't give a brother a mic sometimes. I still have about four minutes left, I think. I'll use them all up. Out of COVID, something birthed, and I just want to share this with you. I was reading a book called The Daily Devotional by a man named Prophet Rob Sanchez. Life is very good ministries. He's a good man. It's called The Daily Devotional. The churches were shut down. We're like, oh my, what do we do? COVID struck. They're trying to shut the churches down. So a couple people in the church opened up a Christ over COVID Facebook page. The day after that opened, God had placed on my heart, get on Christ over COVID and read a daily devotional. So January, sorry, March 21st, 2020, I began something called the daily devotional. And we've been going every day since. We're well into our fifth year. We've got people coming in from all over the world, from Pakistan, from Germany now. <laughs> we've got people in Sweden. We've got the whole nation covered. This thing has been so absolutely fantastic, not just for me, but the little church that follows. I've got people, I think it's crazy that I've been in there every day for four and a half years, but I've got people that have been in there every day for four and a half years. That's crazier than me being in there for four and a half years. So we've seen healings. We've seen miracles. Everybody in there carries favor. They're asking for petition for jobs. They're coming back the next day. Their job, they got their jobs. They're getting their cars. They're getting healed. We're seeing healings. These things are happening. And these are the connections that we're making that are taking the word of God and taking the gospel and taking the healing and taking that everything that God wants to do through us across the world. And it's more important now family than it ever has been in our lifetimes. Do you guys get that? Yeah? So if you guys want to join us on the Daily Devotional, Billy Joe Wade, probably the only name you'll see popping up on Facebook. You'll see I'm a friend of his. I'm a friend of Angel's. Come on in. Every day, 7.30 in the morning, we are live. We've been live from Hawaii. We've been live from from Michigan. We've been live from the Rockies. We've been live from all over the place. Wherever we go, the daily devotional goes with me, and Jesus obviously goes with me. So thank you for your time, Pastor Eric. Appreciate you very much. I was surprised you didn't help me up, Pastor. <laughs> yeah, you should see this. By the time, I mean, my knees were really hurting, and he comes up, come on, I'll help you up. Oh my God. <laughs> Pastor Tommy, why don't you stand up at Pastor Monica? And she won't be here tomorrow, but he'll be here tomorrow. That's an awesome couple. They're awesome. Let me sit down. Uh, my wife and I, we know them through going to restaurants and, until people are closing up and they're waiting for us to get out of the restaurant. There was two restaurants, one where we the Italian place, and they were waiting to get out, and then the Applebee's or something like that, and they were waiting for us to come. Remember, that's that's how I remember you guys. <laughs> Praise God. But yeah, I I met uh, Billy Wade and Pastor Tommy at, in Ontario at a men's fellowship. I just went just to support, and um, they were doing the worship. Pastor Tommy was on keyboard. And Billy Joe was singing, and then the brother playing, uh, I don't know what you call it, some kind of drum. And, uh, and the heaven just opened up. It, it just, boom. It was like after they finished, oh, man, we had church, we can go home. But we didn't. <laughs> you know, we, we stayed there. But anyway, if you have your Bibles, hopefully you do, uh, turn to 1 Samuel 16. As you're turning there, I'm going to read from Psalms 34, 19. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of all of them. Another translation says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Afflictions is evil, distress, 
our adversity. And we all have gone through that. We've all had things come against us. Even right now, there are probably some that are coming against you. But I want the good news is that the Lord Jesus Christ delivers us all, all of them, everyone. We may have to go through it for a while, but we'll eventually get out of it. Amen? I want to, uh, and I won't take long, I promise. We'll get up by 12 o'clock tonight. Uh, lock the doors, Usher. Oh, 35 minutes. Come on now. <laughs> um, the, the theme is warriors are resilient. In Psalms, in the, in the Ecclesi- um, Ezekiel 37 10, it says, And you shall prophesy, and I shall breathe upon them, and they, they shall become a great army. In August of last year, I mean in Arizona last year, we, uh, the Lord down, downloaded in my spirit to raise warriors. You know, no one wants to hear warriors. We, no one wants to be on a warship. We all want to be on the love boat. Come on, you know that's true. The love boat. Oh, that's all I know. <laughs> but that's all we, we don't want to be on a warship. We want to be on the love boat. We want relaxation. We want comfort. I like comfort, but the Lord said, no, you need to raise warriors. And so on. the title really is, are you a Saul or are you a David? Number one point here, we have four points. Number one is not recognized by his family, especially his dad. In verse six, it says, when they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and said, surely he's the Lord's anointed. The Lord told David, don't, uh, Samuel, don't look at his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. Truly, God does not see what man sees, for man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. I'm going to, I'm going to read the next verse 11 out of the message translation. And it says this, Then he asked Jesse, Is, there, is this it? There are no more sons? Well, yes, there's the rut. But he's out tending the sheep. Samuel ordered Jesse, go get him. We're not moving until we, he comes here. The rut, definition of a rut is young, small, insignificant, or unimportant. So let me stop there, especially young people. Sometimes you can feel, even in a family and even in church, you can feel insignificant, even at school, that you're not important, that no one sees you. And there's a lot of kids that are loners that because they feel no one sees them, no one in long, it's there's some uh, grown-ups too. You come to church and no one said hi to me. No, the pastor didn't even wave at me. No. Samuel was looking for a rut, a runt. Do we have any here besides myself? Insignificant. I was, I was preparing this, I was thinking about one time in ministry, and it was several years ago, about 30, and I remember that I was with a group of, of leaders, okay, and we were all friends, hey, hey all, we're just friends and everything we did together, right? And then one day I was coming into the parking lot and I see the senior pastor and two of my friends take off. I said, where'd they go? Oh, the pastor wanted them to go with him to another church to minister. I felt so insignificant. I felt like I wasn't as good as them. And sometimes we can feel, especially young people, you can feel that you're not as good as the other ones. And yet God chose you. God designed you. God formed you. He took time. He didn't just put you together like men. He he took time with women. But he fashioned you. We got to let go. Because the one thing it says in 1 Corinthians 127, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Ephesians 1.11 says, God has also decided ahead of time to choose us through Christ according to his plan and makes everything work the way he intends. Man, we're imperfect. 
but God is not. And he chooses, he chose you already. He chose you to be here. He chose everything. He had a plan for your life. Even when you mess up, he still loves you and he hasn't stopped loving you. And, you know, forget parents. I'm a parent. I'm a grandparent. And we make mistakes. But I think grandparents is awesome because we get a second chance. <laughs> And actually, Cole, Cole's my youngest grandson. He's amazing. And I tell him all kinds of stories, pretend stories. God, Papa, that's not true. Yeah, I, I fought a big bear, and he was so big, but I fought him. Oh, Papa, stop it. <laughs> but he reminds me of Nathan. And such a blessing. They have grandkids. I, we have five. We only get to see two, but praise God for the two we do see. We still stay in communication with the other three. But uh, what am I saying? Our God wants to tell you today, young people, you're not insignificant. You're not overlooked. Maybe man overlooks you. Maybe leaders in ministry overlooks you, but God doesn't overlook you. God watches you. He's watching you 24-7. Those times that you are at, at home and, the, and you're in your own room and you're crying on the pillow because of hurt, God's right there. He's watching you. He's holding you, whether you can believe it or not. So the first point is that we may be insignificant to man, but not to God. And we need to remember that. Saul versus David. Opportunity to fight those who attack us. And I know no one here has ever been uh, verbally attacked by someone. And it happened when the Spirit of God was on Saul that David took a harp and played his, his hand. And there was relief for Saul and it was well with him. So what happened was that when Saul was hurting and, and fearful because he was just being mentally attacked, David came over and played the ukulele. Uh, I was going to bring it today, too. Show them. <laughs> but my wife stopped me. She hid it from me. So you could thank her for hiding the ukulele. <clears throat> Go down to 1 Samuel 18, 8. And you know the passage, but I'm going to read it anyway. Saul was very angry. He did not like the women's that saying. He told himself, they have attributed ten of thousands to David, but to me, they only attribute thousands. What else can have but the kingdom? Verse 11. Suddenly, Saul threw the spear, thinking that I'll nail David to the wall. David ducked, and the spear missed. This happened twice. Let's talk about spear throwing. Saul was jealous. Saul was mad. And he threw a And think about that. After David would comfort him with music and song, he got jealous. And so Saul was... Actually, I was going to bring a spear. The spear I have. But I may miss the throw to someone and hit someone. I don't want to do that. Pastor Angel will let me be behind you ever again. You know, so. And so spear throwing... Some are good at that. Some are very good at that. When I talk about spear throwing, it's talking about attacking someone verbally, arguing. And you know, it's, it's like this. It's like, come over here, Mike, for a second, please. Just stand right here. So I don't like something about Mike. Phew. Throw it, and then what would you do? Throw it back, right? But I'm so quick, I miss it. Yeah. <laughs> but we as Christians are really good spear throwers. We get attacked, we get so someone says something wrong, and we're ready to yell at them back. I mean, come on, you, you probably have a so whole supply of spears. You come into church now, oh man. This is heavy. 
and you're ready to fight. You're ready to throw a spear when someone doesn't look at you right or says something to you right. Now, I even go to the married couples. Okay, we're just going to bypass that. But spear throwing can be really bad because some, some people, Pastor Angel, they're not even throwing spears. They're just <laughs> jabbing people, you know, with their words. But what did David do? He didn't say anything, yet he was a warrior. He took down Goliath. You don't think he could take down Saul? He probably had his, his slingshot right there. But he didn't. What did the Bible say? He walked away. A lot of times we don't want to walk away because we want to throw the last spear. Anyone like that? No, don't raise your hands. Okay, everyone that's like that, put your hands down. Okay. <laughs> but when someone verbally says something that's negative to you, our response is usually, well, what about you? And then we get into this. Well, you know what? Five years ago, at 509, it was a Saturday. We were watching this, and you did this. I don't even remember. And most men don't. We, you know, we don't remember. And so, but see, the thing is, is that men can do the same thing. And so, David, instead, you, you, uh, Billy Joe, you talked about, yeah, I don't know if you could do it, but um, Alfred maybe, uh, but the Matrix. That's as far as I can go. That's it. <laughs> Anything else, I'll be on the mat and, someone, and, and Ryan would have to come and help me up. Ecclesiastes 3 1 says, To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heavens. Verse 7, a time to keep silent and a time to speak. But the one who is spiritual is the one that walks away. You want to stop? You, you want, don't get offended. Don't worry about it. What does God say? And let's face it, we all have been offended, right? You know, leaders have offended us. I, like I showed you, I was hurt when I saw my two friends walk, go away. It bothered me. Do I remember? Yeah, it was yesterday. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but it says, a time to keep silent. See, part of the fruit, not fruits, Pastor Angel and I were talking about the other day, a lot of people say, oh, it's the fruits of the Spirit. It's not true. Look at it. It says fruit, singular. There's gifts. There's the gifts that are many, but there's only one fruit, love. And out of that comes this. But the one part of that fruit is self-control. See, we don't think about the fruit. And I was, we, Pastor Angel and I were having lunch the other day. We were talking about that. And, and I was telling them, I go, leaders... Instead of looking and, plan and studying the gifts of the Spirit, they should first study the fruit of the Spirit. Because the fruit of the Spirit is about our character. It's about where we can be, where we can be self-controlled. Then when temptation comes to, for us to fight back, as David did, he walked away. Think about it. He walked away. Galatians 5.25 says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. A reason, I wrote this down, a reason for walking away is powerful. It's because it gives us the firm control of our destiny and purpose. We don't give it to someone else. We don't let someone else take advantage of us. You want to say something to me? Go for it. I'm walking away. Because I'm not going to use my energy and, and anything that God given me, the grace of God, to fight you. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not perfect. I think I have, still have a couple of spears in the back somewhere. <laughs> yeah, spears that came after me. <laughs> yeah. now, a couple of spears that, you know, I'm not perfect and I'll respond. But I'm, I'm trying by the help of the Holy Spirit to have that self-control and not to fight back. 
not to argue back because let's face it, arguments go higher and higher and higher. So that's the second one. If someone says something to you, walk back. Don't even give them the, the time of day. Just walk away. Three. We're almost, we're halfway through. Now three. This, is a, this one's a hard one. A promise of commitment broken, and here's how a promise starts. In 1 Samuel 17, 25, we're talking, by the way, we're talking about David and Saul. It says, look at him, they said to each other. Listen to his challenge. King Saul has promised, listen to this. King Saul has promised to give a big reward to the man who kills him, which is Goliath. The king will also give him his daughter to marry and will not require his, father, his father's family to pay taxes. Oh, that's interesting. Verse 27 says, so, so the Israelites told David about the reward for killing Goliath. You know, we don't think about, we don't think that's it, but he killed Goliath. There was a reward coming to him. Now, you have to understand this. Everyone knew what the king had offered. Every Israelite knew that the first daughter was going to de whoever defeated Goliath and be part of the family. Everyone knew, okay? I want to make sure you hear that point. And so in verse 17, uh, 1 Samuel 18, verse 17, And Saul said to David, Behold, I will give you my older daughter, Mira, which means increase, for a wife. Only you have to be a brave son and fight Jehovah's battles. Okay, so he told David himself. Verse 19, And it happened at the time when Mira, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, she was given to Israel to be his wife. What am I saying? What is the word of God saying? At the same time that was promised to David to marry the, the first daughter, that same day, that same time, she was given to someone else. Have you ever been promised something and you're anticipating, yes, I'm going to get it, and boom, a slap in the face and you didn't get it, they gave it to someone else. Especially if you're in employment, that works a lot. But sometimes... We are promised something, and it doesn't come to pass. And yet, we can feel ashamed. Why? Because everyone knew. Everyone heard. It would be like Pastor Angel coming up here and saying, Oh, um, brother so-and-so, you're going to be, uh, I'm going to ordain you as an apostle tomorrow or next Sunday. And next Sunday, and everyone here is, oh, Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And then it doesn't happen. But everyone heard. Young people, listen carefully. You'll get into a place where something was promised you. And it's taken away. Just as fast as it was given to you, it will be taken away. But know this. God is faithful. Let me tell you something about our promise, our commitment. This is one scripture, well, many, but this is one that I really stand by that really ministers to me. It's in Psalms 15, 4b. It says, he that swears to his own hurt and change not. He that swears to his own hurt and change not. What is that saying? It says that if you make a commitment, keep it no matter what comes later on. See, we have a problem not just in the world but in church. We make a commitment to the pastor saying, I'll be there. What time? I, I got it on my phone. <laughs> I got it. And they're not there. That's called integrity, our lack of integrity. If we say something to someone, we should keep our word. We should hold it. And, and it's like this. And young people, here's a good one for you, another good one for you. Man, that's like a youth service. Yeah, praise God. But it's like this. You. Say you're invited to, someone invited to their home for a party, right? And, okay, I'll be there. Looking forward to, yeah. And then someone calls you up. Hey, uh, we have this awesome, we're going to go to Magic Mountain. And we're going to have fun, the whole group of kids. You have a choice. Do you keep your commitment to the first person? Or do you go somewhere that's better, that you think is better? See, it, it'll, your integrity and your word will be 
uh, co will cost you if you don't keep your commitment. And if you're going to be in employment, if you're getting a job, you keep your word. You don't say, I'll be here, I'll be on time, and you come 30 minutes later. Integrity. And it's a critical, especially with leaders, we better keep our word. Especially to the congregation. If we say something to the congregation, I'll be there, I'll pray for you, you pray for them. One thing I learned about that, by the way, this is for free. When someone asks me, hey, will you, will you pray for me? Fernando, will you, uh, you ask me a prayer, I'll pray for you. What I've learned now, Billy Joe, let's pray right now. Because if I don't, and then you come next Sunday, oh, thank you for praying for me. I, I got that breakthrough, and we're like, oh, <laughs> Because we, 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 we need to keep our commitment. So if someone ever asks you, will you pray for me, just do it right there. Keep your commitment. In the last days, so many Christians are falling away. They're not even keeping their commitment to Jesus. And they gave their life to the Lord, and now they stopped. I could tell that's hurting someone, so I'll change it right now. Now, here, here's, a, here's a good part. David was promised the first daughter, increase, but then he gets to marry the second daughter, Michael, which means like God. So sometimes when you miss out on the first one, God has something better for you. So it says in verse 25, 18, 25, and Saul said, you shall say to this to David, the king does not desire any dowry except a hundred foreskins of the Philistines to avenge the king's enemy. See, all, all Saul wanted was to put David in a situation to be killed. That's all he wanted. He really didn't want to give uh, his second daughter. But here's, here is so awesome that I hope you take this and learn from it. It says in verse 27, And David rose and went forth in his men, and they killed 200 men of the Philistines. Saul so asked for 100, but David gave him 200. See, sometimes when we're asked for something, give them more than what they ask for. Do more than what they ask for. You know, just, just clean the bathroom. Clean all the bathrooms. Oh, just vacuum that room. It'll be okay. No, I'm going to vacuum everything. Do more than what is asked of you and see how God will reward you. See, he was, David didn't get, die. He just said, we're going to go. And, and you, you, many of you know what foreskins are. And, they, and, and the reason Saul said foreskins, because he didn't want David to kill any Israelites because he knew they were covenant. Philistines didn't have a covenant, so they had foreskins. So if you don't know what that is, Look it up, okay? I'm not going to explain. Our pastor, uh, Angel, explained Sunday. <laughs> I can, I can see, <laughs> I can see someone. Pastor Angel, what's a foreskin? <laughs> and then they go, "Where's Eric? Where's that guy?" <laughs> Uh, Romans 12, 21 says, do not let evil defeat you. Instead, con conquer evil with good. He took David took control of the situation by being a humble servant and giving more than what was asked for. A lot of times, we should give more than what was asked in our whole life. And not just, you know, what are the, what's that word, penny pinching, something like that? You know, just whatever. I, I'm not going to give you more. Okay, that's three. Okay, you got it. Last one. And this is, again, all four are awesome, but this one is probably the top. David had an opportunity to fulfill God's promise. You ever have an opportunity, God gave you a prophetic word or a promise, and now you're going to do what you can to make it happen? The Bible says in 1 Samuel 24, 3, he came to some sheep pen along the road where there was a cave. Saul went in to relieve himself while David and his men were sitting further back. Okay, you know what? He was relieving himself, right? He was going to the bathroom, in case you don't understand that. I, I just, and then in the cave, okay, so he was in the cave, and the men were a little further back. 
and he was relieved. He didn't think anyone was there. We got to watch where we go bathroom at, by the way. From the message translation in verse 4, it says this, And David's men whispered to him, Can you believe it? This is the day God has talked about when he said, I'll put your enemy into your hand. You can do whatever you want with him. Quiet as a can, David crept up and cut a piece of Saul's royal robe. Immediately he felt guilty. What's the purpose of that? Is that when you have a time to get some back at someone, will you do it? I had, I'm learning, I'm growing, I tell you. It's like, you know, Facebook. Facebook gets you in a lot of trouble. I was, I put something on Facebook. And a friend that, I mean, he's not living right, but he's somewhere else. And, and he put, he said that what I put down, something like I wasn't really glorifying Jesus in my life by putting that down. I was like, whoa. Do you think I wanted to save something back to him on Facebook? Yeah, I was ready. To, you're right, Fernando. But I laid the spirit down. But, but there was a time. Because I knew his life and I knew where he was and what he liked. And, and so there was a time that I saw on Facebook. Was I looking for it? Mm, I don't know. And he likes soccer. He's in England. And he likes soccer. So, you know, when they go to the tab, they're like, and you see he had a, a drink. And so much in me, in my flesh, when I say, are you glorifying God? Are you, are you being a testament to, to your friends out there? Because you know he wasn't. But you know what? I didn't. I didn't respond. Because I want to be better. I want to be more God-like. I want to be Christ-like. Am I perfect? No. But I'm working at it. I'm working day and night to be better, to be more Christ-like than be in the flesh and glorify the flesh. When you have an opportunity to get back at someone that did you wrong, don't do it. Because you'll glorify God and you will grow. You'll grow in the self-control, in kindness and gentleness, long-suffering, faithfulness. You'll grow in that. And know that after I, I didn't respond, Sandra, after I didn't respond, I felt pretty good. I said, hey, I, I, I did it. Not did it. I did it. It overcame. James 1.19 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak, slow to wrath. We're always doing the opposite, quick to wrath and quick to speak, right? Verse 20 says, For the wrath of man does not work out the righteousness of God. Matthew 5.7 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You know, sometimes when we're mercy, merciful to others, God will be merciful to us. Amen. 23, uh, Psalms 23, 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house forever and ever. Stand up, please. I'm going to have, I ask the worship team to be ready to pray for you this, tonight. One of the four, if not all four, you've encountered or you're encountering right now. And it's not to, you know, lay hands on you and you'll never do it again. No, it's, it's to grow because it's like God wants you to be, succeed, to be Christ-like. And only when you face these battles or these challenges and respond the way David did, you either a David or you're a Saul. You have a choice when that situation comes up. Are you going to be a Saul? And boom! Are you going to be a David and walk away? You're going to be a Saul that, uh, or a David when he's able to, to really, he could have take, took down Saul right there. He, just like that. But he didn't. And then he felt bad for cutting the, the garment of, of Saul. Be a David. What you're going through things right now, it's only for a little while. Come on up.
uh, Pastor Al and Diego and Alfred. I have my wife come up and pray. Come up, stand right here. Pastor Monica, would you, would you mind coming up and praying for people? Pastor Tommy, why don't you come up too? And since he won't be, see, they won't be here tomorrow. Uh, he'll be here tomorrow, she won't, but come up and get prayer and say, you know, one of those things that Pastor Eric was talking about, I'm going through it. Will you help me? Will you pray for me so that I don't fall and be a Saul because I want to be a David? So why don't you just come on up right now. Come on up and receive prayer. Don't hold back and don't, oh, I'm okay. Because I've been there. If you think we're okay, then all of a sudden we go home and psh, there goes that spear. Let, let, uh, No one else? Young people? Come on, young people. Let us pray for you, please. Let us pray for you. Is there, is there no, let us pray for you, young ladies. Are you twins? Come on, come on. Let them bless you. Maybe nothing's wrong, but let them bless you. You know, you could sit down if you want to. I don't want to be standing, but if you want to sit down, you're more than welcome to. But let them pray for you. Sandra, why don't you come up and pray? Come on, there's Sandra over there that can pray for someone. You know, these, these youth are so precious, what they're going through, going to the school and, and the challenges they're facing. 